thing about the Range Rover and this one in particular is just the way it wafts along the road. You can actually feel your heart rate going down and just your mood lifting. As a result, you don't really want to pile down the road in this car fast. You just want to bubble about a bit. I don't know how they've done it. They defied the laws of physics, Porsche. But they have managed to give this thing body control and handling composure and grip that would allow you to drop most well-driven sports cars. It absolutely does your brain in when you start to drive this car fast. So, conclusion having driven them on road for most of the day is that the Range Rover is massively more comfortable, much more chilled, much more refined, kind of much more accomplished full stop overall. But the Porsche undeniably is quicker and it's it's just more sort of hooked into the road. If you want to drive an SUV like a sports car, buy a KN. But I think we need to go off-road to draw the full picture and the full conclusion because I suspect that the Range Rover might well get its own back when there's a bit of mud involved. So let's see. Right then, that slope up there may look incredibly innocuous. In fact, it looks like an absolute breeze from here, but the bloke that's just let us into this off-road facility has just said that he took a full-on uh, Land Rover with knobblies on it up yesterday and got stuck. And he thinks that we are absolutely crackers to be trying this in what he calls our Chelsea tractors. However, we're gonna give it a whirl. We're gonna see how far the Range Rover can get into the field and up that slope. And then I'm going to do exactly the same thing in the KN, and um, we shall see which one wins. So before we set off, I need to put it in low range, which I have done. You've got a choice between rock crawl, sand, mud ruts, grass, gravel and snow, or special programs off. I'm going for mud ruts. No, I'm not. Yeah, I'm going for mud ruts. <laughs> uh, low range drive and traction control on because that's what you should do apparently here goes what I'm not sure oh my word oh no that's all right Whee! a Range Rover is a Range Rover he reckon we get stuck straight away I thank you, straight up to the top of the field. Absolutely no problem. Oh, thank you Range Rover. Thank you for producing such a fantastic car. Right, I'm gonna try exactly the same thing in the Porsche. So I've got off-road mode on, I've got the centre diff lock on, and I've also got the rear diff lock on, and it's in its highest ride height and here we go I'm a bit scared I don't think it's going to do anything at all come on car come on come on come on come on come on <laughs> it has he's done it he's got onto the better bit wow okay I mean it was definitely more uh, more of a problem in the Porsche than it was in the Range Rover. But the Range Rover just struggled for about half a second and then just went whoosh, straight up the hill. Whereas I have to say, just for just for two or three seconds there, I thought we were going nowhere and that I was going to have to get my wellies out. But give it its due, the Porsche has just gone up that hill that the off-roading expert thought that we would be absolutely practiced to even attempt. So well done, Porsche. So what we're now going to have to do to um, settle it once and for all is actually have a race to the top of the hill. Three, two, one, go! Come on, Range Rover! Come on, come on, come on! No! No! Yes, the Porsche's got stuck. The Porsche's stuck. 
and the Range Rover is still going. <laughs> it's totally stuck. He's up to his axles. Yes! Range Rover 1. Porsche. Nil. <laughs> He's just sitting there going, going nowhere. Oh, point proved. So, the conclusion is, um, the Range Rover is more comfortable, more relaxed, more chilled, just nicer car to drive on the road, and it mullers the Porsche off-road. Um, I think that means the Range Rover wins quite easily. What a thing, what a fantastic vehicle this is, the end. <laughs>